one last voyage for a last surviving Fairmile. Once the Royal Navy's Greyhound of the Seas. World War II gunboat, torpedo boat, mine layer, special forces and rescue motor launch. A last voyage, but a fresh start for this veteran rescue motor launch, RML 497. Well over half a century in service, now with a new future before her with the National Museum of the Royal Navy. RML 497, the Fairmile, she's a Second World War Fairmile B motor launch with an extraordinary track record of, of service in wartime. Um, based down in the West Country for most of the war. Um, she, we know she was at D-Day. Uh, we know she was shot at by the German Air Force. She spent some time in Orkney. Um, she had a, a really kind of interesting and, and checkered war history. So, um, and then survived as a ferry, actually, one of a group of four originally, down in the West Country, where she's, she's been living pretty much consistently um, since 1948 when the Navy sold her out of service. So she's an extraordinary survivor. She's phenomenally intact. Um, there's a huge amount of original fabric in the boat and we're absolutely thrilled to have her. The vessel can't be moved under her own steam anymore, so she will have to be towed anywhere, but uh, anywhere outside the solar is a little bit too much for her. So the aim is, is to get her lifted out of the water onto a cradle which has been specifically designed for her. And then what will happen with that is that with the vessel on board the cradle, the cradle will be put onto a barge, onto a floating barge, and then towed to whichever location she will rest. Veteran she may be, but with RML 497, as with all her sisters, there's more than a touch of back to the future in her story. Flat pack construction, just in time delivery, 24 hour turnarounds, all developed to deliver one of the most successful ship designs in the history of the Royal Navy. The Fairmile concept was to centrally build all the component parts gather them and take them as a kit of parts to the individual boatyards. Bits were built all over the country. Companies like, um, for instance, some that had built pianos were building components for this vessel. Um, they could then be assembled. Uh, it halved the assembly time. But it also introduced new concepts, which are quite familiar now. Um, any production person will, will understand just in time, but that was new. And for instance, the engines, uh, they were held centrally in a store, so they were safe, dry, and they were just taken to the boatyard at the last moment when they were required and virtually craned off the lorry straight into the ship. All the vessels were identical, which also helped from the store's point of view, replacement components point of view, and standardization of components. Uh, nothing was wasted. The, the offcuts from timber, for instance, instead of just being scrap as they would be in a boatyard, they were used for making internal furniture and fittings. The Fairmar name echoes here to this day. This is Cobham in Surrey, where the creator of the Fairmar system, Noel Macklin, based his business behind his house, the cottage. Here, he brought his revolutionary idea into being despite an initial rejection by the Admiralty as war approached. A wrong decision rapidly reversed when reality dawned in Whitehall. This chart here gives you at a glance a building progress on all the boats being built in the yards. Noel Macklin transformed naval design with a maximum flexibility that was key to the Fairmile success. The idea was to put uh, steel straps across the deck. Uh, they were an integral part of the, the vessel. Uh, they had tapped holes in them and uh, things could be bolted down. And so for instance, you could bolt down a set of uh, torpedo tubes and you had a torpedo vessel. You could unbolt them overnight and bolt uh, mine dropping equipment on and you had a mine laying vessel. Um, similarly, you could put uh, depth charge racks on. And in the case of the RML, uh, RML stands for Rescue Motor Launch, uh, she had an entire hospital on the after deck and uh, the job of the RML was to go out and pick downed air crews up. Pull ahead, bolt, sir. 
Noel Macklin's Fairmars would go on to earn a lasting reputation as some of the most successful and lethal assets deployed by the Royal Navy between 1939 and 1945. Because of their ability to adapt chameleon-like to any task assigned to them, they earned a fearsome reputation. Not least in the War of the Narrow Sea, the battle to keep Britain's vital East Coast trading routes open in the face of relentless attacks by Nazi forces. But the half century of service has taken its toll. And before she can bring new generations her story, Fairmar B, RML 497, definitely needs some TLC. As experienced yachtswoman Arabella and her shipwright colleagues find out on their regular checkups. We're currently now on the forward top deck of RML 497. If you actually look down to the planking, you will actually see that you can actually see bare wood underneath the paint um, and all the way along to here as well. And this is the main problem with regards to water actually getting into the vessel. It comes down and it seeps right through. The engine room is an area which um, it often encourages quite a lot of curiosity. So that is quite a high security area with two Gardner engines down there. We want to make sure that they stay there. <laughs> she was used for Marines training during the war in 1944 during the summer. And that was down um, in Devon. And the reason why she was used is because um, she had a, um, a sick bay on her. And so just in case someone got hurt um, out of the Marines during training, they could, they could come on board um, and get attention here. Um, this was reconstructed because actually it worked quite well as a passenger um, vessel to have this kind of shelter for people if it rained or it was really windy. So for now, it's a case of keeping 497 as shipshape and sound as possible before the big move to her new home and her new life. Are you making holes in my boat? <laughs> I've made a pothole in the <laughs> But why go to all this trouble? Coastal forces um, in World War II, they operated something like 2,000 vessels. Their record was fantastic. They, they earned more medals than the, the mainstream Royal Navy. They fired more torpedoes. They were more successful. Uh, and yet they're largely forgotten. And uh, that's a bit of a tragedy. And uh, Medusa, well, she represents a part of that. And uh, she turns heads wherever she goes. And uh, we feel it's very, very important to keep that story alive, keep that going. And really specifically on the fair miles, there's very few of those left now and RML 497 is the best of what's left of the fair mile production. And uh, for her wartime record, for what coastal forces did, and for the innovation in her construction and techniques, it's really important that we hang on to one of these. In the end, it's simple. Britain owes a great debt to the men and women that kept and fought the fair miles at sea in the battle for freedom and independence from a Europe under the heel of tyranny. A message as important today as then, and a debt we can never repay, but which we can always honor, thanks to the National Museum of the Royal Navy, with the story of the Fairmiles, Greyhounds of the Sea. <laughs>